Hey, what's up creators today? We're gonna to be showing you how you can build one of the most popular mechanics for any VR experience, a button. Hey there, my name's Luke, and in this video, we're gonna be showing you how we can set up button presses inside of VR. So with these buttons, you're gonna be able to use your hand and press them down, and you'll be able to see that button go in. And when you let go, you can see that button come out. Now, while this may seem simple, this functionality is something that you're going to use in so many different places in any kind of VR experience that you build. You could use this for doors, you could use it for lights, you could use it for almost anything. So in this video, we're going to be showing you how we can not only create you know, the visuals of the simple button that we've got, but we're going to be showing you how we can add collision to the player's hands and also how we can do the movement of making that button move in and out and lastly, how we can execute any code that we want once the player presses this button. It's gonna be a very quick and exciting session. Let's jump straight into Unreal and start setting up the player's collision. Okay, so now that we're inside of Unreal Engine, the very first thing that we need to do is set up collision for the player. You can find your player's blueprint if you're using a VR template by going to Window, World Settings, and then just opening up your XR pawn. If you have your own custom character, just go ahead and open that up. Then I'm going to open this. Inside of here, you can see all of your different components for your VR character. You can see things like the, the hands and the head mounted display and so on. What I'm interested in doing is just simply adding collision attached to the hand left and the hand right. I can do this by finding my hand left to start with. I'm just going to click on this so that way whenever I add something it will be attached to this. So click on hand left, go to add, and what I'm going to do is just add a sphere collision. I'm going to give this the name left underscore collision. And then you can see here it is attached to the hand because it has got this hierarchy. If it is not, you can drag over it to attach it or detach it. I'm gonna do the same thing with my hand right. I'm gonna select this, go to components, go to add, and I'm just going to add in that sphere collision. Now with these sphere collisions in here like this, I'm going to name it. So we've got right collision and left collision. What I want to do is just adjust the size of these collisions now, and I'm gonna do both of those together. Select both the left collision and your right collision by just holding down control and then left clicking on both of these. And you can see amongst all of this mess of player character here, we've got the hands inside of this and these spheres are just way too big. So what I'm gonna do is set my sphere radius to eight in the details panel. And then also just so I can visualize this, I am going to find in my details hidden in game and I'm going to make sure this is turned off so I can actually see them and then we can adjust the position accordingly. So with that done, go ahead and compile, save and let's test this out. Okay, so we can see we're now inside of VR. The collision size for the hands, it does look good. I'm quite happy with that. But the only thing is they're not far enough along the hands, so the fingers are actually outside of the collision. So we just need to move this along. So we'll do that together. It's going to be really straightforward. So back inside of our XR pawn, what we're going to do with our two collisions selected, I'm going to go to my location. And what I'm going to do is on the Y axis, I'm just going to move this down by eight. Now, once I've done that, I can go ahead and test this and see how it looks. Please do feel free to adjust this to make sure that it lines up for you. Everyone's setup might be a little bit different. But if I go ahead and play this now, let's see how it looks. So back inside of VR again, you can see now our hands have got our collision covered entirely, exactly as we want to. You can also see we've got a bit of empty space here beneath the hands too, and above the hands, it's always good to have a little bit of extra room. So that way, you know, even if the player misses the button slightly, it's always going to be pressed. Okay, with that done, we've now got our player fully set up with collision for the hands. It's time to start building the button itself. So we're just going to take a couple of minutes here now to just build the button as you saw it. If you have your own 3D models for this, 
please do feel free to use it. I'm just going to grab two cubes, make one of them red, one of them white, and just place them together like I did here. Let's jump into Unreal and get it done. So the first part of this is I'm going to go to my content drawer and I need to create myself a brand new blueprint. To do this, just find some empty space and I'm going to create a blueprint class of the type actor. Now with this, I'm just going to call this BP underscore player button. And then go ahead and double click on that to open it up. Couple components that we're going to need inside of here. The first one is our cube. And this is going to be our base. So I'm going to give this the name um, button underscore foundation. And then I am just going to essentially just scale this down until it looks the size of a button's base. So what I'm going to do is just with this cube selected, I'm just going to roughly use my scale tool to make this smaller and thinner. And of course, feel free to use the scale over here as well. So I could set this to say 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and then 0 0.05. And this looks like a good base. Let's just go ahead and compile this. And then I'm going to drag this onto my table. And it looks like it's about the right size for what I want to do. You can see I've got one that I created earlier here. That is exactly what we're doing. So with that done, let's go ahead and add in the trigger unit for this now. So we're going to go to components, go to add, and we're just going to add another cube. And in the same way, we're just going to scale this down until it looks like the trigger unit that you saw in my example that I made previously. So what we should see is we've got a nice little base here. And then we've got the trigger unit and I'm just placing it in just like this. If you have any kind of red material, please do feel free to assign it to the trigger unit. Or again, if you've got your own materials, your own models, feel free to use that. I've already made a simple material that is just red. Um, so what I'm going to do is just search for button here and I'm going to use my M underscore button. Again, feel free to use your own stuff. So now we've got the visuals of our button. We've got the foundation, we've got the trigger unit. It's time to start adding collision to this and then all of the blueprints to make all of this work. This is where the magic happens. Let's jump back into Unreal and set all of this up. So inside of here now, what we're going to do is just make sure we've also named the second part of the button if we haven't done so already. So I'm just going to right click on that, rename it, and I'm going to set this to button underscore trigger. Then what we need to do is add some collision to this. So we're just going to use a box collision for this. And with that, we're just going to move this up. So that way the box collision is just hanging over the edge of the button, just like this. Again, feel free to scale this up or down as you need to. For me, fortunately, it just came into the right space, but we just want to make sure it covers that entire button that we've got. So it goes into it a little bit, but then also hangs out a little bit as well. So as the player is putting their hand down, it's going to press this. And then of course, going to give this the name button underscore collision, just so that way I know what each part of this is going to be. Let's move on to the blueprints now, which is going to make all of this work. We're going to go to compile and save just, just for good practice, and then go to our event graph. Now, the first thing that we need to do is find the button's start location so we can save it to a variable. It will make sense as to why a little bit later on in this video as we start to use it. So the way we're going to do this is with our event begin play in our event graph, we are going to get our button underscore trigger. So get a reference to that in the components. And then we are going to get relative location. And this is just going to get the relative location of that button. And then going to promote this to a variable, which is just going to save that relative location. This is our start point. And that's what I'm going to call it, start location. And then I'm just going to put this in just like this. So event begin play, get the start location. So we've got that. 
Now what we're going to do is when the player touches or begins to touch that button, we're going to start moving the button down. To do that, we are going to take our button underscore collision and then we're going to click on it and in the details panel on the right hand side, we've got a whole bunch of different events. The event that we want for this is our on component begin overlap. So we want to trigger some code when something begins to collide or begins to overlap with that collision. So with this button collision events, and we're going to use or create rather an on component begin overlap event. And with this, the other actor that we want to trigger this is our character. So other actor, we are going to cast to XR pawn. And then once we have done that and we know it's this, what we're going to do is simply do a button underscore trigger, get a reference to that. And we're going to do a move component two. And this is where we are going to tell Unreal Engine to move this component, that being the trigger button, the, the visual side of things, to a new location. The new location is just going to be the start location minus a few units to make it go down. Now, the reason why I got that start location is so that we can have quick access to that. So start location, get a reference to that. That is the vector that we have. And then we are just going to use subtract to subtract a couple of points. So let's go with five points. And then we are going to put this into our target relative location. So just to be clear here in terms of what's happening, when the player starts overlapping with this box collision, it is going to move the button underscore trigger to the start location minus five points, which just moves it down. Let's go ahead and compile this and test it and see how it looks. Okay, now that we're inside of VR again, you can see we've got our hands and we've got our button on the table. It's going to teleport in front of this, reach my hand out and then press it. And you can see there the button went down. The button didn't come up again. That's okay because we've not built the functionality for that. If you feel like your button isn't going down enough, we can adjust those values. We'll take a look at that in just a second. So a couple of things that we can adjust then. So if we open up our button again, you have got the amount that it moves. So I had to turn mine up from five to 50. I still feel like that's a little bit too low. So I'm actually going to make this go down by 60. And then we've also got the time as well. So you can have it go down over 0.2 seconds, or if you want to make it slower, you could increase this number. Or if you want to make it faster, you could reduce it. So I'm going to set this to 0.1. So that way it goes down really, really quickly. Let's go ahead and compile, save and test this again. So back inside of VR, once again, go up to my button, press it. It went down really quickly and it's almost flat. It looks really good. So all I need to do now is just make sure that our button comes up again. So the way that we're going to make our button come up again is by using something called an end overlap event. What we're going to do is when the player's hand stops overlapping that button, we're going to just use the return node on our blueprint there to make it rise back up again. We're going to add a little, a little delay to make it safe, but let's jump into Unreal, do it, and then we can see it in action. So inside of here, we're going to take our button underscore trigger again. We're going to scroll down the details panel and we're going to create that on component end overlap event. What we're going to do is when the other actor, which is our cast to BP underscore XR pawn, we are going to add a delay here, just making sure the delay is equal to whatever time this is. So the original animation can finish. So I'm going to add a delay of 0.1 second. So once we've put our delay, then what we're going to do is use the move component node to tell it to move to the start location. Now, some of you are going to see there is the return node on here, which is fantastic, but sometimes it doesn't work. There seems to be some issues with this. So what we're going to do is after our delay, we are going to get our button underscore trigger again. 
And then we are going to do that move component to again. And we're going to tell it to move the button trigger to our start location. Just like this. And again, we can adjust the overtime. I'm going to leave this to be the same speed as the presses, which is 0 0.1. And then with that, we're done. Let's go ahead and compile, save, and test it out. So back inside of VR again, we've got our hands. Let's teleport up to our button and let's press it and see what happens. So you can see now, as I press it, it goes down. And as I release, it goes up again. So that's it. We've got our button. It is working. You can use your hands and you can use them to press it down and you can see it comes up again. What I want to do now is to show you how we can execute code when the player presses the button. This code could be anything from opening doors, turning on lights, um, or in our case, just doing a print string. Let's jump into Unreal and set you up for success. So inside of here, you can probably guess exactly where we're going to be doing that, and that is when the player presses this button. Once it's moved that button down, from the completed node here, we can run any code that we want. In this case, on complete, we are going to simply print a string that says big red button has been pressed. And then with that, I can compile this, save it, and see what happens. Also, I could play a sound 2D as well, and I could tell it to play a sound such as this one here where we've got click on button, so we know that it's been pressed. Again, you can do absolutely anything. So compile, save, let's test it out. So back inside of VR, one last time, we've got our hands, we've got our button, and when I press it, it returns, it does the print string, and I can also hear the sound at the same time. Okay, so that is our button fully set up and working. It animates, it triggers code, it triggers sound, it's looking great. This is going to be the foundation for so many of your mechanics that you are going to build. Be sure to turn on your hidden in game for your collision on your hands just so it's back to being clean and looking good. If you want to take your VR development skills one step further, be sure to check out my ultimate Unreal Engine VR course, the link for which is in the description down below. For now though, I hope you have enjoyed the video. As always, stay awesome, keep creating. Thank you.